Hello everyone. So, the other day, on Friday night, some weird stuff happened. Um, it's hard to explain really, but basically I got into this discussion with someone that led me on to questioning some fundamental beliefs of mine. Um, ones that I've never really questioned before. Uh, ones that have held very strong within me since I watched What the Bleep Do We Know? You know, about, you know, about quantum physics, the law of attraction, how we are, we are the observers that are collapsing the wave function, all that kind of stuff. I just started questioning it. Um, before I go any further, I just want to let everyone know that I'm not here to debunk any of it. There is a resolution to this story, a very, very intriguing resolution. So anyway, uh, I got into this discussion, went back and forth with this guy for a while, and like I said... I just had this wave hit me, this wave of doubt. And I just thought, am I crazy? <laughs> Have I founded my beliefs in unfounded theories? Anyway, the next day I woke up and I felt a little better about everything, but I was still very much in doubt. And I was questioning, like I said. And so on that day we was going to go and meet up with one of Chelsea's friends that was in town for the day. Uh, he was in town for some sort of Greenpeace thing. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what he was doing, but he was in town, uh, this guy called Adrian. And we was going to go meet up with him, but <clears throat> for some reason Chelsea texted him too late and he was already off again with Greenpeace and we missed him. Turns out that that was obviously meant to be because then me and Chelsea ended up going out. And we got in the car, we didn't really know what we was going to do. I kind of felt like we was going to go into Arcada Town Centre. And as we was heading to Arcada Town Centre, I said to Chelsea, so, what do you want to do? And she said, I don't know, what do you want to do? And I said, and I was thinking, I was thinking, town centre, town centre, and something just popped into my head, said, no, go to Baldur's, which is a bookstore, okay, which I'm sure you all know. So we go to Baldur's, and um, I head in, and we're going to go to the little coffee outlet, because Chelsea wants a coffee, and I was a little bit tempted to, I haven't had a coffee in ages, actually, I've pretty much given up caffeine, but I thought, sod it, I'll have one for, for today, I haven't had one for a few weeks, so, but anyway, before I went into the coffee shop, again, I just had this pulling, this calling, he said, go over to the magazines, go over to the magazines, so, I'm the kind of guy that always follows his intuition, even when I was in doubt about everything, I still followed my gut feeling, and I went over to the magazines, I was pretty much led straight to this little magazine here. It's called Enlighten Next. And I just knew I had to pick it up. And I did. And I brought it over to the coffee shop with me. And I just flipped straight open to this. Straight open to that. Okay? Finding spirit in the fabric of space and time. So, like I said, keep in mind that I was in doubt about the connection between quantum physics and spirituality. I was really starting to question it. The previous night, I'd read up on some stuff about what the bleep do we know that I'd never ever heard about before. Uh, as in, one of the people that spoke in that documentary actually had his words kind of taken out of context, and he didn't even believe in the connection between consciousness and the collapsing of the wave function. Yet, when I watched the movie, it came across like he did. So I really was questioning, like, did they manipulate this? Um, I'm a very open-minded guy, so I'm even willing to question my own fundamental beliefs. That's how open-minded I am. Anyway, right, I start reading this that I flicked open to, right? Finding spirit in the fabric of space and time. And wow, oh my god, just keep in mind that I just had a whim to go to the bookstore, I just had a whim to pick up this magazine, I just had a whim to flick open to this page, and I started reading. And let me just read it to you. Over the past 35 years, the mysterious connection between quantum physics and human consciousness has steadily become a central tenet of East meets West spirituality. Somehow, people have managed to find an irresistibly compelling relationship between the intangible world of subatomic particles and the immaterial realms of consciousness and spirit. It began with Fritjof Capra's Tao of Physics in 1975. Shifted into higher gear with Gary Zukov's Dancing Wu Li Masters in 1979, and fired up the afterburners throughout the 80s and 90s with the help of Deepak Chopra, until the idea became nearly impossible to avoid. 
Upon entering a Seattle bookstore one fateful afternoon in the summer of 1997, I encountered no fewer than three publications, all exploring the relationship between mind and matter through the lens of quantum physics. These books were called The Self-Aware Universe by Amit Goswami, uh, The Spiritual Universe by Fred Allen Wolf, and issue 11 of this very magazine here, whose cover posed the question, can science enlighten us? I eagerly bought the two books, but after skimming through the magazine, I decided to leave it on the rack. Already a firm believer in the physics equals mysticism idea, I found Enlighten Next's special brand of playful scepticism off-putting. Why did they doubt when the evidence was so clear? It was obvious that the deeper dimensions of consciousness and the deeper dimensions of matter converged in the mysterious realm of quantum physics. Right? Not necessarily. It was at this point that my jaw hit the floor, because this is exactly the thought process I'd been going through since the previous night. I couldn't believe it. I could not believe that I'd felt drawn to go to the bookstore, I was drawn to go to this magazine, I was drawn to flick it open to this page, and the first thing I bloody read is exactly what I was thinking about. <laughs> oh my goodness! I was just in shock. And my intuition just told me, okay, now you're going to get some real answers. I soon realised that just because the nature of consciousness is mysterious, and the nature of quantum physics is also mysterious, it doesn't mean that both mysteries are ultimately the same thing. By the time the enormously popular film What the Bleep Do We Know hit the scene in 2004, launching the physics and consciousness idea into a whole new quantum orbital, I was working as an editor for Enlighten Next, this magazine here, and I took it upon myself to review the movie with a newfound appreciation of the many subtleties involved. As it turned out, as far as I and my fellow editors were concerned, the supposedly perfect marriage between quantum physics and consciousness was probably little more than wishful New Age thinking. And when it came to the more serious scientific suggestions that physics had something to say about consciousness, we generally found the arguments less than persuasive. But that was before we met Stuart Hameroff. Although he holds the title of Professor Emeritus of Anesthesiology and Psychology at the University of Arizona and spends much of his time in surgery at the University of Arizona Medical Center, Hameroff is best known for his work in the arena of consciousness studies. In 1994, he founded the Toward a Science of Consciousness conference series, bringing together the world's leading experts on consciousness every two years in Tucson, Arizona, to explore various shades of something called the hard problem. How and why subjective mind appears to arise from objective matter. And for nearly 20 years, Hameroff has collaborated with Oxford mathematical physicist Sir Roger Penrose to develop and defend a quantum physics-based theory of consciousness that is impressive, original, and ambitious, to say the least. The theory is a fusion of Hameroff's and Penrose's distinctly different areas of expertise. Hameroff's studies of tiny structures called microtubules within human brain cells, and Penrose's work on the relationship between quantum physics, gravity, and the geometry of space and time. In some sense, their work could be considered a grand unified theory of quantum physics and consciousness, a theory somewhat more sophisticated than anything you're likely to find in the spiritual section of your local bookstore. After interviewing Hameroff, I found myself questioning my previous dismissal of what I've come to call quantum mysticism, and I'm sure others will find his arguments equally illuminating. In the next video, I'm going to read the article out to you in full, because uh, that was just the introduction to it. Um, but to sum it up in one line, and boy, oh boy, does this resonate with me. We're not the ones collapsing the wave function. We are the wave function collapsing itself. <laughs>